Hello, this is D, and I'm back with another video. Well, as usual, I will leave a link in the description of the video for the article so you guys can click on it for yourselves. Now, the article that I'm reading off is coming from redgaming.com, and it says, because of how close we are to the New Horizon event, leaks and details popping up were inevitable. Today, we finally have confirmation that AMD's desktop lineup of Zen processors, which run on Summit Ridge AM4 platform, will be named Ryzen. Now, Ryzen appears to be a complete monster, with the top-of-the-line processor featuring 8 processor cores, 16 threads, running at 3.4 GHz, and having a total cache size of 20 MB. And the crazy part, they actually are smart enough to automatically overclock themselves with XFR extended frequency range, meaning that less technically inclined folks won't need to worry about voltages, timings, or multipliers. Now, i got to say that's exciting for those people that want to get into uh, to the PC gaming that are intimidated by it. Basically, Ryzen will detect your PC's configuration and it will clock it to the best of its abilities. So if you have a water cooler on there, it will detect it. It will know that it can clock higher and that it can, um, that it has the capability to cool it down once it gets hotter and it will adjust automatically. And that's pretty revolutionary, to be honest with you. Anyhow, this also confirms that AMD has packed in 16 megabytes of level 3 cache and 4 megabytes total of L2 cache in the processor. This amount of cache should reduce the number of trips Ryzen needs to make to the system's main RAM and thus reduce both latency and improve throughput. Pure power is the linchpin of Ryzen's overclocking arsenal, monitoring the power, temperature, clock speeds, and other assets of the processor. From AMD's own breakdown of Zen, the CPU will heavily use clock gating, which simply enables or disables parts of the processor based upon their usage. So if a particular core or a particular unit, say the floating point in core 2 is doing no work and it's integers based calculation, it appears that the CPU will automatically disable this until it's needed again. AMD's precision boost is labeled as fine-grained frequency control and should be constantly should constantly be tweaking the clock speeds and the processor cores based upon the power consumption, heat output, and TDP. It does this in 25 MHz increments and happens in just milliseconds. In theories, this should allow the chip to draw roughly the same power, but clock dynamically based upon workloads across the various CP units, the number of cores and threads, and so on. Extended frequency range apparently scales based on the thermal abilities of the chip, so in theory at least you should spot a rather large difference between going from basic air cooler to high-end water loop. Ryzen's XFR will work alongside AMD's Precision Boost to find the best clock speeds available for the chip, and at least in theory your process should operate at excellent clock speeds. Naturally, how well this works in real life and how much manual control users have over Ryzen's overclocking feature remains a mystery until now. Looking over our Zen analysis, we mentioned quite frequently AMD were in the business of op optimizing the CPU's front end, essentially being better anticipating the way code was going to turn during branch pred prediction. And with larger data stores and much faster caches, the processor, sh the processor should be able to keep important data on the chip rather than constantly farming out to the RAM. Now, I have to say, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about this. Um, we're a few hours out from getting full details on Zen because they're going to be having a live stream later on this afternoon and they're going to do a live demonstration. And it's reported that they're also going to do a live demonstration of Vega. Now, this, ex this is exciting for PC gamers, but this is also exciting for Xbox gamers because Xbox Scorpio is going to have the latest technology from AMD. So we know that it's going to have Zen and we know that it's going to have Vega. Now, these these details coming out uh, today for Zen is amazing. So if Microsoft wanted to, I mean, this is obviously far-fetched, but I'm saying if Microsoft wanted to, they could overclock the speeds of this CPU uh, based on uh, a water cooling solution or some big fan that they're going to put into the Scorpio. They could get really good clocks out of this. And the initial benchmarks are you know, saying that this is as good as uh, Intel's offering, or if not better. So I'm really excited to get all the details that are going to come out of this um, live stream later on this afternoon. And I've, obviously, I'm going to do a follow-up video on this. And uh, just for some of you guys out there that are a little bit curious about Vega, we should be getting Vega news as well today. And I'm just going to go over here to videocards.com. And yesterday, they uh, demoed Vega with uh, Doom in uh, 4K with ultra settings, and it was, it was destroying what the uh, GTX 1080 did. So now, we all know that Vega is also going to be in the Xbox Scorpio, and if it's destroying the GTX 1080, 
my goodness, it's going to be destroying the PS4 Pro, which is running Polaris, and obviously the Vega GPU is superior to it. So later on this uh, evening, I'm probably going to do a, um, a follow-up video because we're going to have a lot more details then. But I got to say, it's exciting times for gaming right now. We're going to get a brand new architecture, and it looks to be amazing. Anyways, I want to know what you guys think, so please leave your comments down below. And I ask you guys, as usual, to please like, share, and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys on the next one.